the Tool Lane Lock is the deepest canal lock in the UK, and we're going to go through it, but we're starting 500 meters away in Sowerby Bridge. Welcome to Downey Live Travels by Boat. We booked with drifters and we're renting from Shire Cruisers. Now the deepest lock has hours of operation, but it's already closed for the day. So we'll spend the night on board our vessel Suffolk here. Our 57 foot narrow boat. I like the three tone paint job, red, white, dark blue, and light blue, four colors. Comes with a great big steering area, bench back here so Nicole and I can sit in the sun and enjoy the ride. Then it comes into the bedroom. Pardon our luggage at the moment. Because we don't have anyone else joining us on the boat this week, it's just a one bedroom. Next, we have a really big bathroom. Then we come into the cozy kitchen. This feels like a little cabin. I love it. I love it. We have a great big lounge area and Nicole's out there already relaxing on the front. It's not the biggest boat we've had. It's not the newest boat we've had, but it's, it's our boat for the next three days. But the deepest lock isn't the only interesting thing about the locks around here. And so I guess the next question is, where are we? And the answer is Sowerby Bridge. And Sowerby Bridge is important because it's where two canals connect. The problem is different companies built the two canals and so their locks weren't the same size, which is why Sowerby Bridge is so important. With the Rochdale Canal having 72 foot locks and the Calder and Hebel Navigation having 57 foot locks, the Sowerby Basin became integral for offloading cargo and then loading them onto smaller boats to continue. And so all of these warehouses are over 200 years old and Sowerby the town itself had a big textile industry here. So this really became a hub connecting the two canals. Well, that is until the train came in. Now that we're settled in, feels like dinner time. I call this supporting local business. Nicole says, I'm lazy. Dinner is served. Whoa. That's a yellow dinner. Woo! Now, as you can tell, there's no table here, but there will be. All right. So, we're spending the night here in the basin while we await the deepest lock to reopen in the morning. After three weeks on narrowboats, we're pretty used to our morning routine. Nicole and I split up the duties and managed to get up and set out in about 15 minutes or so. Alrighty. And this morning, we need to be on time. Not sure if it's gonna be sunny or cloudy, but either way, sunscreen first. So we're pulling out of the basin and turning right onto the Rockdale Canal where there are some interesting boats. Some of these boats look a little different. Looks like an old survival boat you'd have if your cruise ship was sinking. We're here picking up Brian from our boat rental company. Good morning, Brian. He's here to help guide us through the locks as they require a little more awareness than most others. So you're gonna need your handcuff key. Okay. The nice thing is if you come on your own boat, there may be Canal and River Trust volunteers here to help out as well. Why do we need the Canal and River Trust volunteers to guide us through these locks? Well, this lock you don't, you can do it yourself. There's no problem with that. And this, the next lock up, you can do it yourself. But then when you get to the dual lock, that's the deepest lock in the country. Uh, and that means it's got to be manned by one of our members of the staff or a volunteer. Is it a lot more dangerous? Not necessarily dangerous, no, it's just much deeper, so the risks are greater. Vast amount of water comes through the lot when you empty it, so it can only be emptied at a certain pace. Uh, if you empty gotcha. it too quick, it right. can cause problems lower down in these locks. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The deepest lock is only 100 meters away, but before we can get there, we have to go through tool lane locks one and two. And it's a busy morning so far with some friendly characters. Hi, Jim. Hi. Hi, you friendly, friendly people here at the locks and, and docks. So Brian and I are going to get the gates open and let Nicole into the lock. And right away, you can see this is a double wide lock, meaning it's the width of two boats instead of just one. And she's quite a ways down. And for the first time in my narrow boating experience, we're being told to tie off in the lock so your boat doesn't bang around as the lock is filling. Great throw! But there are a couple other unique tricks to these locks that I didn't know about before. Now this lock is so big that it has what's called a stay bar. So once you get in place, pull this down and it'll leave it. As usual, these locks take about 10 to 15 minutes to fill with water. 
All right, don't forget to lock the lock before you leave it. Now, just one last lock to go through before we get to the deepest lock. Lock two might be the prettiest, right under a church and going straight into a tunnel. Now, as you can see, Nicole is driving while I get to crank the locks. I figure get my exercise for the day out of the way early. Honestly though, these are the biggest gates we've seen yet on this trip, but they're not difficult to open. Canal boating is made so that anyone can operate the locks. Which brings us out to the second lock. These first two locks are already the deepest we've seen yet. How much deeper can the next one be? Deep locks mean lots of water. You can see as the water swirls around how it can easily bash your boat against the walls, or worse, if your boat comes forward, it can get flooded. But that's why we have Brian, to make sure we're operating these large locks safely. Because these locks are so deep, we tie Nicole up to the bullards inside the lock because there's so much rough water coming in that the boat would be bouncing around wall to wall. Okay, so because the next lock is the big lock and it's through the tunnel, we can't see it. And we also can't go in because boats need to come out and the tunnel is tight. So we have this pound to wait in. And Paul, who you met a second ago, the volunteer, will turn the tunnel lights on to signal to us it's time to go through. And another thing we'll notice is uh, it will be emptying so much water that we'll see a current coming out of the tunnel and the water level in the pound here will begin to rise. We could be waiting out here a little while because Brian says the lock we're going to is twice as deep as the one we're just in. So we have to wait for them to fill that up and empty it. So we could be here a little while. You'll have to, you'll have to ask our gaffer if he wants this for a training video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See how low the water level is right now. I see some ripples coming out. The leaves are moving. I can hear the sound of it echoing through the tunnel. Tunnel lights just came on. Yeah. So apparently these three locks used to be four and they went into disrepair. And in fact, the big lock that we're going into used to be the fourth. And the third one used to be where this tunnel was. And when they built the road, they just kind of filled it in. And then when they wanted to get the locks up and running again, well, they had this filled in lock. They just tunneled through it and made the fourth one deeper, which is why it's so deep. And apparently inside the tunnel, you can still see the markings of where that third lock used to be. At street level, you'd never know there's a canal that passes under your feet right here. But that's the interesting part to me. Tool Lane Lock is almost unnoticeable from street level, whereas when it was the main way to transport freight and cargo in the late 1700s and early 1800s, it would have been an important part of town. Most of these cars have no idea they're driving on top of a canal right now. And this tunnel was only made in 1996. Were these the old paddle spots? Yeah. For the lock. Oh, right. There's a, there's a beam right there. And to the moment we've all been waiting for. Welcome to Tool Lane Lock, the deepest lock in the United Kingdom. Oh my gosh, this is huge! Even though it's one lock, it's still technically called locks three and four. So you can tell this lock is new. I mean, these are, these are concrete walls. These are not stone walls like you see in the other locks. And <laughs> you can't even see the top. Look at them close the gates. It's like Jurassic Park. And so it begins. Just like the last two locks, we need to tie our boat to the side so it doesn't bash around, but the walls are too high to throw a rope up top. So because we can't throw a rope up top, they have these cables here, tie the rope around it, and now we can hold ourselves against the wall. What an impressive feat of engineering. I mean, sure, it takes twice as long as a normal lock, but it's doing the work of two locks. And I see now why they have volunteers that have to run it. And that's why when we arrived late last night, we weren't able to come through this on our own. As you can see, we're currently at the bottom of the lock, almost 20 feet deep. Now, just for reference, a double-decker bus isn't even that tall. Also, I'm at the front holding the rope to the wall, and Nicole is at the stern with Brian. And that's because you can't operate this lock yourself. It's operated only by CRT volunteers and takes much longer than a regular lock to fill. We just said it takes 20 to 30 minutes to fill. The higher up you get, the bigger they can open the gates, so then the faster you go. So we'll be 
It should start to go a little faster here shortly. And for those of you that like numbers, the lock uses about 130,000 gallons of water to fill it. What's amazing is we're in this concrete canyon and there's a main street right next to us. We've just gone under that tunnel, underneath the big street. We passed underneath the church and I'm not sure where we're gonna end up yet. That was impressive. That was fun. Having just seen so much water get used for a single lock, you have to wonder, are water levels ever an issue in the canal? Well, we don't know it yet, but we're about to find out just how precious water is to the canals and what happens if there's not enough. You used to braved the deepest lock in Britain. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Our new friend Brian will walk back to the rental shop while Nicole and I head on alone. Along the edge of the canal are old textile warehouses that likely would have loaded cargo into boats right here. But the heritage of the town is beautifully mixed with the greenery along the canal. These are either apartments or offices now, but I wonder what they were originally. Hi. But very quickly, the scene changes from industrial to beautiful. In fact, it's not long before we're out of town completely. I think what I love most about the canal, not just driving a long boat, which is really cool, but it's the mix of industry, history, and nature that you get on this adventure. This self-guided, self-paced adventure. As I putter along here, I'm realizing that this is the final canal of this trip. So I'm trying to enjoy it as much as I can. This will never get old. And whether it's the stone tunnels along the way or the green tunnels made by the tree canopies, this is an outstanding canal so far. So the Rochdale Canal is a relatively short canal and averages about three locks per mile. I'm trying to take in this final experience as much as I can. And one of the little bits of history I learned about was that this was one of the last surviving canals. But if you've ever seen one of my videos before, you know things never go this smoothly for very long. Water is the most important element of the canals. Without water, well, boats don't float. So canal engineers would build reservoirs and pump systems to keep the canals flowing in the hot and dry summer months when water levels drop. But even more importantly, was containing the water they already had. Of course, people like to gather around water, so the canals have brought a lot of benefits to the communities along them. Ah, seem to be a lot of Canadians out here enjoying it. The most critical part of containing water on the canals are the locks. And it's my turn again to open this one up. And it seems there's another boat in the lock ahead of us, so I'm gonna help out. Huh. Is this your first time? Uh, it's my fourth. Yeah, we've, well, I've been doing four boats over four weeks, so this is our last one. It's always good to have the extra hand to help with the locks. Yeah, it turns out it's a couple of lovely ladies narrowboating for their first time. Oh, nice. Wow. I'm happy to lend a helping hand to get them on their way. Let's face it, the sooner they're out, the sooner we can get Nicole in. But as I'm cranking all these paddles open and closed, I'm realizing that doing a double lock by yourself is a lot of work. Open the gate, cross over to the other side, crank the paddle closed. Then I have to push and close the gate, then walk to the front. But before I start cranking open the front paddles to let the water in, I'm noticing that the gates are letting in a lot of water already. And someone mentioned to me earlier that a boat crashed into a gate and caused it to leak, and I wonder if it's this one. Either way, it'll help us fill up the lock faster, and hopefully there aren't any consequences up ahead that I'm not thinking of. The level looks very low. No, no, They've got realized. still. Uh, the, the water level, if you look at the bank, and it's very down. Yeah. So you might have to just stick near the middle. Of, uh, would, yeah. oh, stick the to channel. the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Oh, look, our new narrowboating friends are already beached. No problem. I've dealt with this plenty of times so far. If you go full speed reverse, and I'll push off your nose. Nicole, give it the beans. Make a wake. There we go. All right, you're free. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna go jump back on board with, oh, oh no, maybe they're not free yet. Okay, I'll end up driving them. Not quite. I guess I shouldn't ask Nicole to come to the shallow edge to pick me up. I'll just walk along the towpath. It's really shallow. Can you let me through first? 
Oh, I, sh I should have just kept walking. This water level is the lowest we've ever encountered, but Nicole's got this. Ooh, they really should put sign in them. Oh, now they're beached. Oh. I don't think we can go back and help them without getting stuck ourselves. I hate to leave them, but all we can do is keep it down the middle and keep moving forward. You can see how low the water level is. I mean, it's got to get better after this tunnel. Oh God, it's a stinky tunnel. The tunnel is tough enough as it is, let alone a big right-hand corner. Oh, how low, shallow. Oh my God. Okay, well, I feel like my work here is done. Okay, any more locks? I don't know, you can check the book. That's uh, tunnel 14. <laughs> Are you feeling that? This is shallower than last week. These boats are designed that scraping along the bottom shouldn't dent the propeller, but I'm starting to get pretty worried about damaging this narrow boat, or worse, getting stuck here. We can't keep doing this. We have to come up with a new plan. I feel like this, if there was a spot to turn around, this might be the end of the line for us. Water normally flows into this drain and that's almost two feet below. I mean, this boat is three, three and a half feet deep and the canal's normally four feet deep. So it'll be down a well, foot. How would I go to the front? I don't think you're heavy enough to to balance us. Maybe you should go to the front. Like we're we're literally in the middle of the canal right now, as centered as we can be, and we're we're beached. I could go to the front and try and counterbalance, but how far do we really think we can go? Well, we at least have to go far enough to turn around. Or we we'll just start backing up and pull pull it along the towpath through the tunnel. Leg it through the tunnel. A thousand percent no. That's incredibly dangerous. I'm not doing that to the tunnel. We're gonna beach ourselves. We're just gonna get stuck here. We're not gonna be able to do anything. Uh, 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 every other boat has been able to go that far. Or they're stuck here. We don't know if there's anyone else. Well, why would they have sent us to Hebden Bridge? Oh, lovely place to go, lovely place to go, if, if we weren't able to go there. I mean, I don't know. There's like, no chance that that Brendel place was like, Oh, by the way, if you get beached, leg it back to the tunnel. That's dangerous, it's irresponsible. Just seems like the other option is getting stuck further up. It's, it's, but how is every other boat able to get through? We don't know if they right? have. We don't know if so they where turn Where are around. they? Where do they turn around? I don't know. If you put that out on YouTube, the boat companies will be in trouble, probably. This yeah. is the first time we've disagreed on this trip. Through all the other challenges the canals have thrown at us, We've worked together, whether it was learning how to drive a narrowboat and pushing ourselves out of the mud on day one, or boating in inclement weather, or pulling a strap out from our propeller, pulling in a stray boat in the rain, or being yelled at by gongooslers. Navigating the narrowest canals, or knocking into hidden obstacles underwater, or here, struggling against a leaky lock. But all of it so far has been worth it, from cruising through the pristine Welsh countryside, being greeted by animals canal side, enjoying a rainbow at sunset, or joining a boat parade on the Queen's Jubilee, and being welcomed into homes by friendly locals. Of course, we were joined by friends along the way. What a toast! <laughs> and helped by interesting Canal and River Trust volunteers and learned about some very specific and unique facts along the way, but also got to go through and across some epic architecture and engineering marvels before ending the day by a wood-burning fire. The canals are not perfect, but that's why they're worthwhile. Life is better with challenges, and challenges are best overcome together. Well, I mean, we have to at least try. Yeah, I'm as far forward as I can be. Seems to be working. 
Oh, a lot of scraping sounds at the bottom. Well, at least we can see our new friends made it out okay. The liveaboards want us to get ahead so we can get to the next lock and let some more water through to this area. Look at this, this boat is completely beached at the side. It's too bad, I love the look of that one. That like rusty patina, very cool. This is a lot like the original barges they would have had come through here probably. There's the next lock, right there. If we make it here, we make it. You don't have me to counterbalance the boat anymore. You good? We made it to the lock. Hopefully the next section's better. We've heard mixed messages. We've heard someone say it's better and someone else say it's worse. Well, we'll find out soon enough. So brave. All right. So far, so good. Water level looks a lot better up here. It's not worth quitting over a small rough patch. Even if today is a little bit more work and more stress than usual on the canals, cruising through here, where it's so quiet and calm, just makes it all wash away so quickly. Well, we should find a place to moor, really. Mike, did it not work to put you in the front, my big, beefy boy? It did work. I guess I'm heavier than I thought. These canals are almost 200 years old. They're not perfect, but that's what makes them amazing. All the challenges that you encounter along the way on your narrow boating journey are what add to the adventure. While the calm cruising is what we enjoy in the moment here, the difficult moments are what we'll talk about when we get home and likely be what brings us back again next year. This is exactly why I love narrow boating. Adventurous days with relaxing nights in new places. You made it! Long day. For your first time on a narrow boat, you went through a tough spot. I'm so bagged from today. Is it okay if we just order in again? Unacceptable! We will rally and go out! I already know you feel the same way. I, yeah. You Don't pretend to know what I <laughs> want. I mean, no offense, Hebden Bridge, but you never would have been on my normal tourism list. But here we are, and I'm, I'm glad we're here. But this isn't it. Next week, there's a bonus episode, which is almost completely underground. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the Stand Edge Tunnel, the longest and deepest canal tunnel in the UK, right here on Downey Live Travels by Boat.